hello everyone out there I just want to make this video now and it's like a it's a testimony a little bit but it's also um, how the Holy Spirit taught me something and I, and so I'm gonna just um, tell you now so when we was in Liverpool and we was um, out witnessing and we was in this cafe we met these young people yeah they were like probably about 18 or something and there was all um, like you know gothic type type young people and they had like you know all the makeup and all the weird rings and like oh, not weird but you know whatever their style is yeah they had all the stuff what what you know just that gothic type style yeah all the black makeup and everything and weird like strange looking clothing yeah so um, we started to talk to them about God we went over to them and we was you know Jack started talking at first and they wasn't really responding well at all and uh, it was like it wasn't going well and the, talk, the conversation was going nowhere and they was coming up like what so it, if I don't believe in God God's gonna send me to hell <laughs> I don't want to believe in someone who's going to threaten me with hell if I don't love him. And it was like, you know, we didn't really have an answer at first. And then the, the Holy Spirit just, just came upon me and it gave me this wisdom in the moment, yeah? And I've never ever said this before. I've never learnt this off a video. I've never learnt this off anyone. This has come straight from the Holy Spirit. And it, I don't, it just came into my mind, yeah? So I just, I just, the Holy Spirit took over me. So I started to preach the gospel and I said, you know, which one of you out there, I said, if your child had got in, a, in trouble, been arrested and um, was in the police cells and then the, there was a bail to pay, right, what, what, what would a good dad do? What would a good dad do, I asked them. And they said, well, he, he'd come and bail you out. I said, exactly. I said, that is what our God has done for us. I said, we're the ones that have gone away and got ourselves in trouble because of sin. We're the ones who've told lies. I asked them, How many, have you told lies? They all agreed, yep, I've lied. Have you stolen? They agreed, yep, stolen. Have you blasphemed? Yep. I said, so we're the ones that have gone away from our dad and we're the ones that have committed trouble, crimes, and got ourselves in trouble I said, but our dad loves us so much, he has come and paid for the bail and he's paid the debt for us, yeah, because he's a good dad, he's a good father. I said, so this is what your dad in heaven has done for you. I said, and when I explained it like this to him, they, their all attitude changed and they just opened up to the gospel. And then, literally, we led them to the Lord right there and then. You know, I mean, I can't, I can't say for sure that, but they responded well to the gospel, and it was a good. I didn't, you know, they didn't get baptized. We didn't baptize them, but I know full well that their hearts were changed. And so we, we, we prayed with them. We prayed for them. We prayed with them, and I told them the gospel. I said, look, the Bible says this year, you know, in Acts two thirty eight, that, you know when the people realized that they'd messed up and they needed to be forgiven they asked peter you know what shall we do peter preached the gospel to them and they said what shall we do and the response was you need to repent and get baptized for the remission of your sin and you receive the gift of the holy ghost so i, I told them that i said you need to repent and get baptized for the remission of your holy ghost for the for remission of your sin and you receive the holy ghost so I said, you know, who wants to be forgiven? Who wants to be forgiven? And bearing in mind, they were so hard-hearted in the beginning. And they was like, yeah, we want to be forgiven. We want to be forgiven. So I prayed, I, I prayed with them. And we asked the Lord to forgive them. And the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And they all got touched powerfully by God. And it was a beautiful thing. And then I told them, look, you need to get baptized. You know, and I gave them my card. And I told them they need to read the Bible. And I told them they need to start seeking the Lord. And I, I, I told them, I said, look, contact me and I'll link them in with some people in the area because I'm connected with quite a few people in Liverpool now, praise God. And so, you know, it was like amazing how, you know, 
the way often we can mis almost mi misrepresent God, like threaten people with hell to make them believe, but that is just not really the case. Yeah, it's not like God is saying, "Believe in me, or I'm going to send you to hell." It's like we've already condemned ourselves to hell by our sin, and God has has paid for our He's come and done everything to rescue us out of hell. It's not like He's going to say, "If you don't love me, you know." I'm going to send you to hell. I mean, if that was in a relationship between a man and a woman, you'd say that whichever person was saying that is a psychopath. You'd say, if I said to my wife, you better love me or I'm going to flip and kill you. You know, I mean, who, what type of representation of God is that? So that's a misrepresentation of God. But the true representation of God, which the Holy Spirit showed me, was that, you know, we're the ones that have gone astray. All we are like sheep that have gone astray and everyone has gone to his own way. But the Lord has laid upon Jesus the iniquity of us all. That's Isaiah 53, go read it. You know, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And so, you know, we're already condemned by our sin by our lying, by our stealing, by our blaspheming, if we're all honest, we've, we've lied, we've stole, we've blasphemed, we've gossiped, we've slandered, we've all done things shameful. Some of us have done, a, I've done a lot worse things than the majority of the people, yeah? But even the best person out there in the world has told lies, has been deceitful, has done bad stuff, which they'll be done stuff that, if they're honest with themselves, they've been done stuff that they're ashamed of. You know, they've got drunk and done stuff also, you never know what it could be. But the fact is, yeah, you know, God, it, Jesus Christ is our saviour. And so this, when someone comes and saves you, they're not, they're not the condemner, they're the, the saving you. And so this, this mindset, when we're dealing with people and we're preaching, I'm, it's been amazing how God just gave me this revelation. It's right there in the word of God as well. You know, but, and it says the goodness of God is what leads man to repentance. The goodness of God, not, not threatening people to go to hell, is not going to lead people to repentance. Not screaming and shouting at them and, and, and saying that they're going to go to hell. That is not going to lead people to repentance. The goodness of God is what leads people to repentance. Now, you know, the fact is, yeah, we do need to repent. And we do need to, you know, turn away from our sin. And we do need to get baptised. And um, yeah, we do need to do them sort of, you know, we do think everything that the Bible says we have to obey. We have to obey Jesus Christ. You know, like Jesus says, why you say you love me, but you don't do what I say. You don't obey me. So it's like, but the reason why we obey Jesus Christ is because we do it out of love. Because we know that he has got the best interest for us he is the one our heavenly father in heaven he knows what's best for us yeah when we went astray away from him we made a mess of it we made a right mess of it look at the world so it's like right i tried it my way it didn't work so do you know what i'm gonna go your way now god i'm gonna listen to you like i should have in the first place just like when we're supposed to listen to our parents yeah but we disobey our parents and they say to us oh don't go play on the road don't go climb up that wall and we go play on the road or we climb up that wall and we get knocked over or we get fall off the wall and cut our heads open and they say i, I told you not to go on that wall it's not because they try to control us or you know be like that yeah the fact is it's because they love us and it's the same with god he loves us so you know when we realize it's a love story and it's it's so much makes much more sense you know what i mean so i just pray that this this will just encourage people and you can use this in your evangelism tactic it's brilliant it works a treat so god bless you all in jesus name i pray for everyone here and i love you all in jesus name amen